Welcome guys, welcome to another video. In this video, we will complete the React registration process and store the data in our backend API using Laravel 11. So, so in the previous video, we worked down the form. We have username, password, and then confirm password. But our API expect the email as well. So if I say here, I have Arthur as let's say the name, and then I remove this email for now, just a moment, and then I hit send. Then we get email is required. So that's the API how we designed in the first video. So what do we need to do? We need to make sure that we pass the email as well. So if I say here, Arthur, and then we have the email, then we get the ID. So we have a user registered. So this is a quite basic point at this point. So let's do it and fix it first of all. So here, I go back to the React code where we have left off. So here I go on top of the page. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove all this code and just gonna paste the code that I have here. So let's see what basically changes I added here. So I go on the top of the page. I added a new ref here, use ref. So we are basically going to set uh, so if I go back here, refresh, we can see that we have email showing up here, refresh. So I have to select it, I added the use uh, ref for the email ref. Then I also added uh, regex. This regex is going to check for if the email is valid or not. Now then we scroll down. I also added states. So I have an email state, set email, by default it is empty and then here is use state which is by default false and then we can set here valid email or not valid email now we on email change we are also checking each time like if the email is changed if it is a valid email or not so that is happening here because use effect will if I run each time the email is changing it keep on uh, using the email regex and test it after this, once all this done, we are saying that error message needs to be empty, like whenever we change these values. So that's happening here. After that, we have the submit form. And in the submit form, I made a few changes here. So I'm basically checking if the username is empty, password is empty, or email is empty. Any of these is empty, then we want to set this error message and return. No further process needs to be done there. Now we have a try catch statement here and what exactly happening here is I'm using XEOs and here is the register URL and I'm passing this content user email and password which is required by our API and header is the because we want to pass it as a JSON so that's why we are passing it right now. Then we are seeing the console log and there's just a response there and we are setting success to true that's all. And we are setting the user password and match password all to empty, like initial state. All right. In the catch, if we face any problem, we get the console log as well as the error message. Now in the form itself, if I scroll down, in the previous video we created this. So I added the comments here for your, so you can easily understand and see how things are working here. So we have name, email, password, and confirm password. The button for sign up, I disabled it. So I commented it out because we need to click the button. This basically disable. If you enable this line, it is going to make your button disabled until we get all the values. But I want to leave it like this now. I, I will not remove this code, but it will be there. So here, what we are doing now is in email, I have the input type uh, email placeholder email you can see that email ref is set here and we are setting on change set email the target the value is email and here we are checking the valid email as well for the validation we have if not valid email we show that please provide a valid email address otherwise it's a valid email and we get the green checks I removed the crosses from the previous videos only the green checks are there now. All right, so far so good. Now I just save it and go back to the browser. The styling is not coming. For that, you can go to index.css and look for the input. We have input here. I just copy this and paste it back. 
an input type email this time so this is the email type and now it should be there all right so we pause here Roger valid then sum at gmail dot com email is valid now password I'm gonna use this test password because it matches all the criteria now we have it all now when I'm gonna go into the inspect mode here and then hit sign up we get no response uh, no server response if I go to network uh, we have this 404 error so now let's see how we deal with this and make the data save because currently uh, our content is not getting saved because of it all right so it's time to save the user so once this all detail is provided and uh, we go to the function function is right here that we are uh, sending the data to the endpoint so the endpoint I defined on the top which is register URL now in the backend we have routes defined so here is the backend file and in this file basically when we are storing we are basically storing using this uh, URL so slash users it needs to be post request and then it goes into store function and if I go to store function there we are basically checking if we have name email password if we have these values then we are storing it it needs to be unique it needs to be minimum uh, maximum hundred so these validations are there as well okay so what we can do here is uh, we just need to change our URL in the front end so that, that's what we do so I go to register here and I go to change here to users so if we it was uh, yeah it is users and it is a post request so in Axios make sure it is a post request so axios.post so we are dealing with that just fine okay so it's time to test so what we need to do we go back to to the browser and in the browser if you see we currently have three users the last one we store using the postman if you remember initially I added the Arthur so Arthur with ID 4 is here now it's time to add it using our app so what do we need to do basically let's try so here I say mark Another user, mark at gmail.com, and uh, the password. I'm just going to copy and paste this, and like so. Sign up, hit it. Now, when I hit it this time, we still getting the error. Let's see. So, here we are going for localhost 8060 users. It is going to users. We need to send it to slash API slash users. So we need to change this to like this and then try again. All right. So let's do that. Refresh. And I got to pause the same details again. So it's going to be mark, mark at gmail.com, password. I think I have the same password copied and then sign up all right so far again enter let's see so this time uh, post so you can see that the URL this time is fine localhost 8060 API users but we get the cores error this time so it is not letting uh, communicate with the Laravel application to make it work so now we need to deal with the course error so I have the Ubuntu uh, here and the containers are up and running so what I want to do here is I need to go inside the backend application so here I say docker exec id and then the backend is 5e4 bash so we get inside it and inside I got this command here basically we need to publish a course config file so when you hit this it is going to generate a file here with the name of course here we need to define some things now currently it is telling us that all uh, methods are allowed and all the origins are allowed the application is running on port 3000 so for that what we need to do we need to put here uh, instead of all we need to put here http colon slash slash and then we need to say localhost yeah, 3000 and here we have the uh, support credentials i'm going to change it to true so I save this and this time we need to uh, clear the configuration one more time so here 
I run it again. Now, if we go back here, refresh. Uh, now we need to fill it. Now, before that, I want to actually let's try it. So what I do here, I pass it the name of rocks this time, and then rocks at gmail dot com. Then we put the password here and the password here to sign up. Still letter. So let's see what is happening here. Okay, so this time we have the error uh, password as well as the name that I not provided. So you can see that it is getting us these errors from the back end as it is uh, we defined here. So these are required according to that. It gave the errors there. So let's go and see what happened here. So here, when we are passing user, we need to pass it as name so because in the back end we are expecting name. So we want to say name put the value of user there and PWD is in the front end but in back and we are expecting password so it's going to be password like so so here this time all should work as expected so what I do now refresh change it and I minimize it again and let's do it rocks rocks at gmail.com I copy the password one more time and sign up. Okay, we have success. Now let's go to database and see there. There we go. We have our users logged in. Uh, there is one problem in our form that it allowed us to save the user with three letters because we have at least four to 24. So let's see why. So what do we need to do in code? I need to go back here and where we have the validation there in the start i'm gonna put here this check it is gonna check for the name as well as for the email if it is not valid name it's not valid email give us these adders so let's do this what we're gonna do now is that go back to the browser and try and see how it works so this time i would say mac then mac at gmail.com i pass the same password you can see that it's if I put Mac like this it's valid if like this it's not so if I hit sign up we get the please provide a valid username so this is working now so user has to has provide us that and then hit then hit sign up then it goes to success so that makes perfect sense to uh, for the validation that from the front end we are able to pass the data so here if you want to pass uh, with the same name like you can see that email has the same name in the front end it is email in the back end we are expecting as email so we are just passing email we are not saying here that email email either you can say this way as well but if in the front end and back end it is the same you can keep it single like this so it will work without an issue hope you like this video we will continue to make more video in this series regarding this topic so Subscribe to the channel and see you in the next one.